How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to review this thing, the Step 310E I'm just going to call it the Step Toe, that's what it reminds me of, that's what I called it for a little while I'm doing this one today because I wanted to still have a little bit more of a test with the club plus I wanted to do that one at the weekend um, yeah, I also wanted to know what this one was like because I've been using it the last couple of days and it's like, it's hard to know where it kind of I don't know, lands with all of them so uh, looking at the engines, I'm going to go for the third one which has got the best power to weight and everything but that bottom one is like not as far off it's pretty close considering it's only 2300 I'm going with the high range gearbox, I'll show you a little bit of both but I personally think the high range is better as for the uh, raised suspension it barely even raises it and then the tyres as well, to be honest they're smaller tyres than I thought like it shrinks the screen a bit but they're like 38 or 39 as like the normal ones and then 43 uh, when it's like the larger tyres which is still pretty small really I think even the Voron AE was 47 inch tyres and they seemed a little bit on the small side compared to like the Dolphins got 50 or 51 um, yeah so it does sit fairly high for what it is but just that's what I noticed um, yeah a winch I put advanced medium the spare wheel just goes on the chassis as for the frame add-ons, to be honest, it takes quite a lot of stuff. It's not um, that seismic vibrator module thing compatible. I was just looking how much the suspension drops on all of these different things. The fuel definitely it isn't quite... it sort of bottoms out, but it bounces back up a little bit. Uh, which, yeah, like I said, I think the fuel is a bit too heavy. The crane always usually makes the front end drop a bit rather than the back for whatever reason. Um, diff lock's already on and then yeah the snorkel I got the tallest one I could it's near enough to the roof not uh, not far off um, yeah adding stuff on like the truck uh, there was the cabin protector which I don't really like anyway as for all these obviously you got like an air conditioner uh, some horns and the fog lights and then for the bumper I line it up that those boxes in the background that's the stock one that one's like it it's a bit nearer the truck so it's technically better. I'd say that one's a little better as well. And then personally I prefer this one just because I'd say it's between the top two. But because this has got like a nice little slope on it as well. And it does sit it sits higher than the third one. But it then goes a bit lower with the slope. But yeah, that's the one I'm going for. I'd probably recommend one of the top two. It's still got two fog light things on the bumper, so I think all the top three have. Um yeah, put a sun visor on it. And then as for the rims, I think in the end I went for the uh, the five spoke ones. And then uh, yeah, as for the colours, obviously all the normal colours. One thing I do actually like, oh, I'll just say quickly, it looks all right in black, but it doesn't show up the like fenders very well. The load style is a similar one with these quite rounded fenders. Yeah, as for the colours, they're actually like that's a nice blue. Uh, it looks better than a lot of the faded ones. That's obviously like quite a nice bright orange. That's not a bad green compared to some of them. It's not quite as bright as like all of these ones. Again, that's a nice red though. And that one, I don't dislike it. I'd say it suits the truck pretty well for its sort of Asian style. But yeah, I definitely would go with one of these brighter ones. Uh, yeah, we'll go outside and have a look. So, like I said, for considering what it is, it sits pretty high. And the fuel tank, at least that side, look pretty uh, narrow. I think, yeah, they both are. So they don't really sag down and like drag along the ground or anything as bad as some some trucks um, inside looks pretty old school I'll be honest that mirror it's blocked by the snorkel a little bit but it's a pretty small mirror anyway so it's not really of any use uh, I can see out the back window though you can see both my tyres so that's plenty you do sit quite high in this truck I can see out of that mirror and like I know it helps that it's dual rears but I think they all are on this truck anyway um, yeah, I could see the tyres in the mirror while I was looking forward, which is nice. View out the back, can definitely see plenty. I can see all the way across that garage door. As for the horn. Yeah, not too bad. It's got a nice little bit of oomph to it, but it's one of those squeaky ones again. As for the rev range, it idles, I think, at about a 1,000 or something, but then when you rev it up, I believe... Is it like 2.6, I think it went to? Um, yeah, pretty slow revving. So uh, yeah, we'll get certain off. Like I said, I've gone for the uh, high range in this one. 
I'll show you a little bit of the low range because I was on an hour in myself, but I'll explain why in the end I do think the high range is better for it, even though it is kind of close. Um, as for trailers, it can basically have all the different trailers, I believe. I believe it can have every single one. Some of them sit pretty high, the towable ones do, but then you look at that one, like the tyres, I don't think it's the worst, but they definitely sit in past like the alloys of the trailer. And you can see as well how much bigger the tyres are on the trailer than this. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nippy when it gets up to speed, but I don't know, it's a bit of an odd one this one, because it's like the power to weight ratio is S+. Plus. But then when you add stuff like a crane or so on, it like it drops the power to weight quite a lot and it's definitely one of those trucks where it really doesn't weigh a lot. But then it has a few odd characteristics that kind of imply it weighs more, but I really don't think it weighs a lot at all. Uh, a lot at all. Um, yeah, and like, I should again be able to sort of show you as and where I've... that's my gut feeling. Um, going across here... I'm in auto and it's doing like pretty nice, obviously I'm in high range, I could go to low range with the diffs on, I believe I do in a second, but like, yeah, it's, this is how fast it is in, that's why I don't use it a whole lot in the summer of my reviews, like the actual low range, because anything is usually more comfortable in low range, if it's going to keep moving, it's going to keep moving in low range. It's just a bit slow, like, for even for my personal gameplay, it's kind of a last resort. Alright, this is the low-range gearbox, or the off-road gearbox. And the only reason, like, say, travelling along now, I'm in fourth gear out of four, but I can go about that fast in the high range, and, like, in the high gear in the high-range gearbox. And, as you all know, when you put it in high, to its credit, as long as you're actually going fast enough to go in high, it motors up to speed pretty nicely and just stays there very well, whereas obviously to get up to the same speed with the off-road uh, off gearbox, I've got to go first, second, third, fourth gear, so that's like personally why I'd choose the high range. There's also, going along here, I would definitely say this has got the edge by a little bit. Going through there, obviously I've got the um, high-low option. You can see though, it's spraying a little bit of water up, so it's still bleeding some of the speed to just wheel spin to where like you don't get the full speed benefit of high low necessarily but then now when I put it in high as you can see it's just slower where yeah in a high range gearbox I can make that time back up afterwards really and it's not the sort of thing I'd choose if I was on a really boggy map but if I was then I would probably go for the uh, off road absolutely missed that tree the first time <laughs> the steering on this thing it's not broken or anything, it's not like the Freightliner, although I believe they might have fixed the Freightliner, but I'll have to test it out. But when I reviewed it, it was broken. And, um, yeah, this isn't that bad, it's just slow steering. It's like you sort of turn it, yeah, and it just feels like it takes half a second to a second to react, really. And then it's one of them as well, once it does react, you kind of... You go all at once. Um, again, this is low range going through here, which... I mean, medium low, and it's doing... Not bad, I think. I tried a couple of the other gears, but medium low seemed like the best. But again, now, after I'm out of there, it's taken me a bit longer to get up to speed. So this was the high rate. I'm not doing everything in uh, high range and off-road. I just, these were the bits I was trying with it. It was kind of before the review where I was trying to decide which one I actually want to do the review in. And uh, yeah, right now, it's in just obviously basic low, which I was basically in in the off-road gearbox and it gets out of there just fine but then now after I'm out of there I can a couple of taps in the uh, auto and put it into high and yeah I can just gain that sp like if there is any speed gain I can gain it back afterwards as for suspension and stuff to be honest it actually isn't that bad for suspension considering it's like once you are going in high range I wouldn't say it is the fastest in the high range but it's not like they're pretty close but yeah you can see it's taken the odd bump but nothing special I've certainly never really had an issue with its suspension delete or anything as long as it if you hit well those barriers but if you hit like those side metal barriers that can obviously take a massive chunk off but I've not particularly noticed it taking hits as you're just driving down the road those over the top hits at the minute that delete half your suspension again it's possible 
especially when this thing like in the, the high range gearbox if you've got a chance to get up to 8 gear it is pretty bloody fast but it's not as quick to get up to 8 uh, as for going through here, I was doing low range again, trying high, medium, low, it's all about the same. To be honest, it's pretty slow through here. Not, like, ridiculous or anything, there is other things that are. But, this is one of the things that kind of gives me the first impression that it's a pretty light truck. Because a lot of the other lighter trucks don't go very well through here. And they're doing now, you can see from the rear, it was just, like, wheels spinning and flicking water up. And that's because it's not really got any weight to push itself down in the mud to really bite in and go along so yeah it's kind of because it's very light I believe it's sitting on top of the mud and it's yeah kind of slowly walking its way along but it's um, yeah it's basically sitting on sloppier mud so it's got less grip less bite to it to move yourself along so anyway the uh, snow test went alright through there got a little bit slowed down there but I wouldn't say it's like, I'd say it's pretty normal with most of the others. See, so because the fuel tanks are nice and narrow, it didn't catch them. So even though the raised suspension doesn't seem to do a lot, and it has smaller tyres, it's still got over that barrier, which is pretty good, that's nice to know. Like, the chassis does seem to sit fairly high on the suspension and stuff it's got. But I still obviously think, like, yeah, say 47-inch tyres or something would be uh, pretty nice. So even starting to climb up over that rock one it actually started to climb up here which was nice and uh, even though it did beach most stuff does there but yeah it didn't try and roll itself or anything which a lot of them do and then it managed to get over that bit which again even considering it's got small wheels you can see those rear like the dual rears sit pretty uh, wide And then going up here, I mean, it's not rapid in the snow. If it's shallow snow where you can just drive normally, it's not so bad or anything. But through sort of deeper snow like this, I mean, one, it's pretty slow. But as well, this affects a lot of lighter vehicles. I hit that grey bush and it's just, like, it slows you down to a point where you almost stop. And I, I never have stopped. Um, but... Yeah, they get pretty close, whereas obviously something like, I don't know, the Colob, just to do like the other end of the heavy scale, it wouldn't even really care that that is there, it just, it's too, yeah, there's too much weight digging into the ground for grip, whereas this thing, because it's light, once it gets some resistance like that, it's not, um, yeah, it's struggling to bite in and push past it. <laughs> That's what she said. I had to say it at some point, I said far too many innuendos then. So uh, we got up there, went down the other side, and I kind of went a bit right of that, but however, the bumper like, didn't really catch or anything like that, so nose-wise, it is pretty good to be honest. It's not the best, but I mean, I've got a better nose test in a minute anyway. But it got up on that rock, and it, yeah, it did all right. Jumping over there actually did pretty nicely. And I'm not sure, but that's where that bumper might help, like, rather than just being a squared off edge. It's, like, got a slope on it, so when I hit them pipes, it kind of launched my nose up in the air rather than just dug in like some of them do. And then as for going for the trees, I'll be honest, I didn't have high hopes anyway because you need a lot of power, really, to go through these. And, again, even though this is S plus on the power... I believe it's just because it's pretty light. It's a little bit, say, I wouldn't say they're similar characteristics, but it's a little bit like the TUZ16 they've added, where it's got plenty of power, or so it seems, but then when you actually put it under stress or anything, it starts to, yeah, that number soon declines. And basically, some branch had hooked me, and I just, I, it took me about a minute or so of, like, reversing and messing around, but I did eventually get through there, but it, yeah, it was a little bit iffy. But not everything is gone through, like say the Taiga and the Dolphin and the Loaf <laughs> they all get through the Loaf's pretty damn small, I reckon like a lot of the other scouts would be alright but yeah, for considering the trucks like the Dolphin and Taiga and Voron Grad, I believe they all uh, yeah, well they do 
I've tried them many times. Um, next up, the cargo test and turning circle. To be honest, it might be like a tad better than the sort of A N K White Western Star, all the usual ones, but it's around there. I just clipped those bits of snow that are like outside the garage. You see there? It was still on me. It's like my fault. I let go of the steering and it straightened up, and I went to turn again. And yeah, I'm just not really well. Whether I'm used to it or not is like <laughs> I don't expect the steering to be that slow so I keep it pinned fingers crossed and yeah clip the wall going along here though I thought it was just gonna get stuck here anyway to be honest and then I put it in low and uh, yeah actually started to crawl along which even now I was kinda like well that's better than something I think to be honest because the cargo or at least the trailer is sat on the rear axles it's actually uh, sort of doing me a favour more than slowing me down at the minute. We're sort of getting to the point where that root's sticking out of the ground, which I didn't really... I can see it now on the replay, like I'm pretty much my wheel's on it now, and that's around, I believe, where I get st stuck, basically. So... I had a little look around. I used the winch in the end, but like I say, because that root's there, which wasn't there for like the first half of the review videos, it's kind of an extra little obstacle. I am going to give it a free pass on this one, because I was pretty happy that it actually, apart from that one little bit, I got through just fine. And I believe like the first time when that root started appearing, I got caught on it a couple of times then. And yeah, like I'm not saying it's great through here or anything, but it did make it die just. I was only trying now, by the way unpacking and packing the cargo I just wanted to see if the trailer jumps up and down because uh, you should be able to see it later when I go to the quarry and load the concrete slabs they are very heavy and it visibly shoves the semi trailer down as well as your suspension whereas I already had a feeling these weighed basically sod all and uh, yeah by like obviously unpacking and packing it takes the weight off and on them and uh, yeah the trailer didn't really move I mean, if anyone, if anyone needs uh, service spare parts, <laughs> talk to me. Do a special deal. Um, as for the water test, it's not doing too bad. Again, it's a little bit sluggish. I'm not even in the high, to be honest. Normally, I'm uh, in that. As, to be honest, I believe in high. It'd go through just fine, but I believe it'd be like that little bit, like 5% or so slower than most of the other things. And going through here, considering it's not a very big truck, it's uh, rear tyres, like with the dual rear tyres, definitely sit pretty wide, because it only just made it through there. Which is not a bad thing, I mean, I'd consider that a relatively narrow gap compared to, like, you get some of the, you know, the P6E and that, to drive, like, up one side of the rock and stuff to get through. But yeah, the fact that the tyres sit wide, in fact, you'll see, like, they do offer you some decent support for tipping or not tipping but once they've gone or they slip off something there's not a whole lot left to stop you driving along there though it's a little bit slow through the snow I stopped off his room a cat was bloody itching his head or something and was like punching a cardboard box with his foot I was like what the fuck is that like the FBI was coming in or something but just him um, yeah it drives well through all that like where there's actually tracks in the snow when it gets to that little patch of snow again it's not struggling it's just slow for some reason which considering well I believe it's because it weighs next to nothing as for the, the horizon considering the bonnet kind of arches up in the middle it's not really that bad it's about on the sort of line really I could uh, still see those trees as I was coming up that hill all view like obviously the mirror of that side is no good views are pretty fine you sit quite high in this cab you can sort of see if anything like the window is quite sort of shallow or narrow and um, yeah it's almost like having a sun visor on like when I tested the Ford Clip 9000 that had like the yeah Japanese sun visor thing on <laughs> people are wondering if you knew it yeah I talked bollocks I had no idea either <laughs> I've never said these things out loud before um, yeah but if anything it's just like you need to see further up <laughs> than down um, going through it again, not too bad. You'll see it over this river. Pretty decent. I was looking around there because you feel like you're really low, like you're almost level with the snow. 
And again, it's not a very big truck, really. Did pretty nicely through there. I put it in high a little late, but you'll see. I uh, came back for a second attempt, so you'll see. And again, going over here, a lot of trucks... The Tager made it most of the way, but eventually it kind of bogs down in the mud. Even though that is kind of bogging down, it's definitely got the rooster tails with the water spraying up, but... I don't know, I think because it's really light, it kind of, again, didn't fully sink in the mud. So it didn't try and say stalling. And it didn't just wheel spin on the spot, it kind of like scampered along the top of the mud, so... Yeah, I mean, getting up that first lip, it was fine, however... I believe this is a bit unlucky, but I got a seriously dodgy bounce, and because those, uh, what were they, right-hand side tyres had already slipped off the side of that rock, there was nothing else to prop me up. It's like the, if you imagine like the Voron Grad, with the single rears on anyway, that has a much wider front track than the rear. This has obviously got a much wider, wider rear than the front so yeah that's the like where you get most of your stability from but I came back for another attempt and there nothing happened like I've not really had any iffy bounces with a nose all night so I do believe that was a bit unlucky but again I did tip off to the side there <laughs> I was like, oh no not a second time but as you can see once it went like there's not a whole lot with the front to uh, actually hold you up or stop you going or anything but because it feels like there isn't really any weight, or obviously there is a little bit, but I mean, like, relatively speaking, it's a pretty light truck. It doesn't feel like there's any weight in the cab or anything either. And, uh, yeah, again, going through here, it's just slow, basically, but not uncomfortable. I don't think... I went... I did go around to the left of that grey bush a bit, because they're a bit crazy, but... Yeah, that's why I just edited that out, like... It's fine along there, it's just nothing... Yeah, it's not going fast, not really particularly excited or anything like that. And then going along here, um, yeah, low range, diffs on. It's one of those trucks where it, uh, the diffs are engageable, so... So with a lot... I prefer trucks probably that have got diffs always on, because then first gear auto is effectively like a high-low gear, even with a high range. This is obviously when you put it in auto. Um, yeah, you got diffs off, so I put it in low now. The diffs on. I have to say, up to now, as I, like, it was doing better than I thought, particularly because the suspension doesn't really raise it, and it's got smaller tyres. I thought it'd have no chance in here, but again, I believe because it weighs nothing, it's not fully punching its way through to the bottom of the mud, and it's kind of so far dragging its uh, bumper and stuff along the mud and uh, yeah around now especially because it's gone through like the first watery bit I kind of thought oh it might actually have a bit of a chance but essentially it just got slower and slower until I had two or three goes at winching it out because I was just trying to move the nose over a little bit eventually you can even see now it, w it still won't go now so I pretty much used the winch again, basically got my front tyres to like the very edge of the where the mud and snow is, and then it started to go slowly. And after that, I made my way out. So yeah, overall, relatively compared to the rest, not amazing, but it actually like it was a little bit better than I thought it would do. And uh, yeah, it's not particularly worse than any other trucks, it's just not certainly not one of the best. I'm going up here through the snow, I'm actually in auto at the minute, and it's doing pretty nice in auto on the snow. Like, in the. Like, I don't want to use low if I can. More because it's not like. like Low's very nice gear or whatever. Uh, one, I do like the speed slightly of auto, but. It's because I forget then. I go to reverse or something, and it's like, oh yeah, shit, I'm in low, and I've got to put it in reverse. And, like, the amount of times that has caught me out. I just, if I can, I'd rather be in auto. And again, stuff like the Dolphin and Loaf, they're both diffs always on. So when you're in auto, it's like, just like a high-low gear anyway. So, uh, yeah, managed to get to the top of this mountain pretty nicely. Went for um, a little bit of a steep nose test there. And it's catching. And it was having none of it, but... Yeah, overall, I wouldn't say it's that bad. Like, the GMC, funnily enough, the GMC is a bloody good truck, especially for the money. I'd almost go as far as saying they definitely shouldn't touch it or do anything. If anything, improve some other trucks now. 
But yeah, the GMC is a bargain. It's like, for what it is, it's bordering on too good, but it's not. It's not too good for the game. I'm just saying, for the money, it's a bargain. Um, now it's got the all-wheel drive. Yeah, that has no nose on it, pretty much. This has, like, the bumper. You have to have a bumper and stuff, so it caught its nose a bit, but it's definitely not that bad. It, all throughout the night, it's not been an issue, really. So get to the rolling tech. And oh, a lot of trucks would have already gone by then. I actually had to kind of move that one over a little bit. Nearly landed on its wheels, but, like, that um, left bank of rear tyres just still... By the time they landed, I was about 45 degrees anyway. It's my cat chose about them to jump in front of the telly and stare at me like, what? Um, yeah, I brought uh, the Tager and the Loaf. Once I got out, I, I could kind of see I was just about to beach myself anyway, so I just flung a winch out, grabbed onto it. And then as I drove down, to be honest, I suppose it like took the tension out of the winch, and uh, yeah, it rolled over. As for driving down the hill and round, it it did it, it was just slow, uneventful, nothing special, definitely wasn't trying to roll or anything. I have to say, credit where it's due, it is pretty good for not rolling. And even getting up there, it had a little second where it paused, but that could be the slow revs, but there quite a few vehicles kind of slip and lose grip a bit there, whereas that did thought about it for a second and then it kind of carried on, so again, that's pretty nice. And going up here, this is now, like, where this area, I think, yeah, it's a pretty decent truck. Like, a lot of stuff would have rolled way before then. And because it doesn't really weigh a lot, it was following the tracks of its tyres well, like, even though I was leaning a lot, it wasn't trying to understeer and slide sideways. And now, when it had more of a, like, level ground, not still, still not level, but it landed on its wheels pretty comfortably, like, in theory, there was enough momentum to keep me going, but once it slammed down on them wheels, because the rear is so wide, it just... Yeah, it does plant it quite well if you land back on your wheels. And, uh, yeah, drove over the top there, was turning into it, and it still didn't roll now. This is like, normally, I would edit the video about... I suppose about now, but normally I'd jump over that hill and roll. Not with everything, but a lot of things definitely, like... Going along here isn't easy, and I've done this a lot in, like, the Tatra. The Tatrin's pretty good at going, like, it can probably beach if you go, like, level. But, yeah, the Tatrin goes around here. The, the Dolphin's definitely not bad. Um, the Tega, I've done this quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, this is the neat... There's not a lot of trucks that could do this now that wouldn't have rolled five times already trying to attempt it. And even there, like... I believe I turned into it as well, or like, out, I don't know, whichever way is worse. <laughs> and uh, it still didn't roll. I got a bit of an iffy bounce there, I've, I watched it back quite a few times. I don't really know what caught there, it was just a bit of an odd bounce. I'm not sure if the wheels dug into the snow and kind of, yeah, twisted the weight around, but either way, I'd certainly uh, got away with more than I was hoping to. So yeah, it did pretty well, if I'm honest, in the mount, as far as not tipping and just climbing up those steep mountain thing on its own because obviously the power to weight is s plus when it's on its own it's pretty good for stuff like that but it's then when you start loading it with heavier stuff a lit i said this ages ago when i did the white western star video um yeah this reminds me a little bit like the western star like it's very comfortable on its own but once you start loading it up with the heavier stuff it uh, didn't want to know so much, but they're not exactly the same. I'm just like that's roughly where I categorised them back in the day, and I I still I quite like the uh, White Western Star. Go down it. It looked like it wanted to tip a bit there, but it didn't. Just so down into Quarry now, which is where you'll see some. I've not seen many trucks sort of do this. You'll see what I mean in a second. Going along there, it was not that fast. Even now, you can see I'm basically wheel spinning and barely moving. But then when I added the cargo, I actually sped up a bit, which is generally the opposite to most things. Obviously, you add weight and that's it. But because this thing, if anything, still does have some power, like it, you know, it is S plus, but it just doesn't weigh a lot. Um, once the actual weight pushed down on those rear axles, which, I mean, there's eight wheels basically for all them rear axles there's only two at the front so 
that's eight tenths of your grip but yeah once the weight shoved those rear tires down it actually started getting out of there even better so I wouldn't necessarily recommend hauling heavy stuff like this all over the place but you'll see now how it does up the hill I just stopped for a sec because I didn't have a loaf up there and I knew I already had a feeling this would happen this is one of many reasons why you get yourself a loaf it's like a mobile winch point and uh, yeah it saved it however I wanted to pack the cargo again because as you hit, heard it unpacked it and um, yeah you have to like roll back you have to sort of have your truck or at least the trailer fairly level to repack cargo which is a bit of a pain in the ass but I assume that's on purpose yeah this is definitely packed cargo now and as I was driving up here and you can see those sidebars on the semi trailer they're like digging through the hill they're sort of following the path my uh, front tires made but that's where that ramped trailer has like those little sidebars but they weren't digging anywhere near as much and like that Antarctic thing couldn't even drag the ramped trailer up. There's definitely something wrong with it. At least one other person has said the same and I mean that's how the internet works isn't it? If one person agrees with you, you don't need, you don't need evidence. <laughs> it's now fact. I don't make the rules. I just make the rules so they don't come me. Anyway, going up here, I'll be honest, I didn't have very high hopes. It was uh, it was close, but it actually did get up uh, the first two quarry hills. How I just knew. <laughs> I knew. In fact, I definitely knew, because I've already been here like months ago with the uh, White Western Star and this, doing the exact same thing. Um, it, funnily enough, it, well, in auto it was going like so far, then I put it into low range with the diffs on and I got a little bit higher, then I put it back into auto and it's like, and I believe now I go back into low range with diffs on. And then, yeah, starts to go a bit more. You can tell this is more like its limit because now the rear tyres have locked up. In auto, it was wheel spinning still. But again, as you can see, there's no weight no weight in the cab to keep the nose down or anything like that. So, at this point, you know what time it is. Had to uh, send up the loaf. And as you can see, it's a goddamn beast. See? Rocks. Not a problem. And we're away. Um, yeah, going to have to winch it up because it keeps doing that bloody like every time you get up to the top of the hill yeah its nose just tries to roll back which as you see I let go of the uh, loaf as soon as I let off the steer I'm trying to put the handbrake on so I can put a winch to those trees because this is like in my own time if I was ended up with this truck this is the kind of scenario where I'd be yeah trying to get this up to the top winch the loaf let go it did the same thing rolled back on its handbrake lifted the nose in the air and rolled over it started to slip down the hill, but that's why I quickly changed to the loaf, because then it just kind of locks it in place. Uh, yeah. Had to flip it back. Luckily, I suppose, again, sideboard trailer, it kept those two pieces of cargo in there. And, uh, yeah, try again with the winch. Oh, when I actually got up to this point, you can see there, when I'm driving, it's like the slack's gone in the winch, which is good, and I've stopped hoovering the winch, and that's pretty much why, but... The reason why I wanted to is because when the winch was taut and I was letting go of the winch, it was kind of like releasing the tension and pinging me back, but because I was able to like let it sort of rest on its own handbrake before just like letting all the tension out of the winch, it, um, yeah, I was able to stop long enough to put a winch on the tree, got the trailer hooked on the rock a little bit, but we got up there. And then I was driving past now, I'm only going to drive down there, but I thought oh, I'll just borrow a bit of fuel from the loaf. And the driver off, I was like, hang on a minute, did that just take all of it, you greedy bastard? Offer him a bit of fuel and he bloody has a lot. You give me that back. I mean, good. Don't offer this thing a fucking M&M &M out, you might as snatch the old bag off you. So, uh, yeah, flying down here, it didn't tip over as it went around the corner, some have. I mean, again, not the fastest, it caught its, uh, like, semi-trailer legs on the, uh, on the rock as it went over. Most stuff does to be honest but again it's definitely not the fastest. Having no real issues though. It did get down there. It didn't like lose its cargo or anything like that. Not really any chance of getting up here. 
partly because there is like rocks in the way in this thing with particularly small tyres. So next up is the ice. Not just ice, but when you drift it, it doesn't roll like ridiculously easily like some of them do, pretty much because those are, again, the jewel rears are pretty wide. Flying along, oh, hang on. My bad. Anyway, apart from that, again, drift to the side. I, I know it's on ice, but I've done it on like the roads and stuff as well. It is possible to flip. You'll see that coming up <laughs> pretty soon. I went for the Jeff Special across there, so I've turned the all-wheel drive off. Yeah, it didn't actually. It took a little bit of a hit, but it got over there. However, in that middle bit, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but they've added like an ice island or something to like roughly where I just drove over. So there's like a big chunk now that you just can't break through. It's almost like instead of one wide bit of breakable ice, it's like split up a bit, which I'm not sure I'm keen on or not. I also think they might have made the ice a bit, a little bit stronger than like the other day or yesterday, day before or whatever, it sort of felt like you could break through it pretty easily. I could be wrong, maybe it is just like, again, this thing is ridiculously light. It still is able to go through the ice though. So I was on my way back, I was, uh, yeah, look at that, 102 or something. I stuck it in the Jeff Special, like, sod it. I have actually almost jumped to the other side of that. I landed on the other side, and as I was trying to claw my way back up, like, the ice underneath me was kind of, like, slipping out the way. So rather than me driving forward, it just zipped that behind me, and then I slid back off the uh, ledge. If you get it right with the old Jeff Special, again, just auto, 8th gear, you can sometimes do 7th, but wait till it's in 8th, just bang in high. And for the proper Jeff Special, you need to blip the throttle and stuff, again, check Jeff's uh, videos out for the Jeff Special. It's definitely worth knowing. But you see, coming over there, a bit I'm driving over is like just solid ice that won't break. So that's why I ended up moving a bit further down here, just to find a bit that does. And as you can see, like, tyres went straight in then. So, I don't know really if the ice is stronger or not, or if they have, like, messed around with it a bit. I'm not actually sure. If anything, that bit looked pretty weak. <laughs> but once you get it properly stuck, again, because it's got little tyres and stuff, it's not amazing at getting out of here, so... Checking the angles, bring out the twin stair, punch it back out of there. And twin stair is a goddamn beast. Oh, go on, power through it. <laughs> you can do it. Oh yes, we got it pinned. I mean, yeah, like I say, it, it, they're going to add all-wheel drive to this thing. It's going to be a goddamn beast if it's still as meaty as it is. The only thing I'm not 100 percent on is like sometimes when you disconnect all-wheel drive on vehicles. They almost go a little bit faster because there's like more power going to the rear wheels. If they add all-wheel drive to the twin stair, I hope it doesn't kind of take the edge off high range and everything. I hope it doesn't, um, yeah, there's like so many wheels to feed that it kind of can't. It's a little bit like, I believe the derry, if you remove one set of axles off the derry, it'd uh, help it a lot. I mean, say the derry was 800 horsepower and it's got eight wheels, if you took two wheels off, instead of having 100 horsepower per wheel, you've now got like 150 horsepower per wheel. So yeah, I hope it doesn't like, feel like it's half the power. Not that it would be that much, but hopefully you get what I'm getting at. <laughs> As for uh, this, I was actually pretty happy with how well this pulled the uh, twin steer out. I kind of winched, messed around with the winch with the twin steer, managed to get this thing back on its uh, tyres. And as you can see, as I was winching this to the twin stick to drag it out, that little island I was going up on is like that new, just like, ice bit that you can't break through. So uh, I was stuck in here, but I was just wondering while I was at it. You see how, like, when I'm winching with the uh, twin stick, it sort of creeps forward and then stops and creeps forward again. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but when you try and drive in at higher speeds, it's like the vehicles you're towing are putting on their brakes every now and then. That's one of the reasons, still, before all that, is why I like towing the loaf out of anything, because it weighs subtle. Like, the Dolphin in high range, it just doesn't care. It doesn't matter if you had the handbrake on, I don't think. <laughs> so, yeah, I was trying to just line all these up and <laughs> try to get a take there. Like, yes. Day 16. 
I still think I'm one of them. Just play it cool, boys. Like David Attenborough. Right, and here we have a wild steptoe grazing on the great US naval base planes. Perfectly relaxed in its own habitat. Watch what happens when I do this. See, that's what I want to see. David Attenborough. Like, I know he's done Blue Planet and that. I want to see, like, Crazy Planet. Where he's like, I don't know. Here we have a an endangered spider monkey. Perfectly relaxed in its own habitat. Watch what happens when I do this. And then he just throws a fucking cuddly toy at it and it loses its shit. <laughs> or he whips. Whips a hippo on the ass with a tea towel and watch them all go mental. I, that'd be pretty entertaining. As you can see there, I drifted, I dug in. It, it is flippable. Flew off here. Obviously, I was coming down here for a, a water test. I'll be honest with you, if you haven't got another nine minutes, it doesn't float. <laughs> but I get a little distracted here. Like, hang on a minute. Two plus two, that's four. Minus one, that's three quick maths, and we're off. Bam, that was definitely dolphin, dolphin length. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I flipped, flipped it back over, so we ain't even. We're just getting warmed up, not just nailing this. I mean, I was pretty proud of myself with what I achieved tonight, if I'm honest. Yes, nailed it. However, I was like, well, it would have been nice if I just hit the back of it. It might have flung it up a bit. But anyway, I tried and it wasn't happening. I had another go. It's like, I mean, I don't know. Like something out of Kama Sutra. Like the backwards slippery dolphin or something. And he's done. He's relaxing. Um, yeah, went to do the Taiga. <laughs> this is the thing with mud ties. Like, oh, left of it, right of it, left of it. Oh shit, don't do it, post! You son of a bitch. That post is like a goddamn magnet. That's what she said. I tried to explain. This is a different kind of sticky. Yeah, I missed. But, at this point... I was like, well, I had to measure my, uh, had to have a practice dolphin. Just working something like that. I was like, okay, Bruce, we need ourselves a Bruce. It was a little bit unlucky here. I just happened to, like, stop dead as I went over this reasonably large rock and it caught on the petrol tank. And it was like, if I'd just gone forward as normal, I would have been fine. But I just, yeah. So, of course, D wedge. De wedging with a dolphin. And we're off. I mean, look at it. I almost tip. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does my crane ping to the right? Look at it. <laughs> it's like, it's like this thing's alive. I tell you. Give them names and they become sentient. I mean, that definitely just flicked the crane to the right to stop me from tipping over. Even the cargo. Oversized cargo erection again. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is probably why the video is pretty goddamn late by now. It's about nearly 2 o'clock already, so I'm definitely pretty bit. I'll probably be asleep by the time this uploads, but yeah. Um, had to test some things. I mean, practice shot. <laughs> if you haven't worked out what I'm trying to do, you're probably thinking, oh, what a goddamn beauty. I mean, hate is getting mad, but we're in the US airmail business now, boys. We're expanding. Yeah, that's what she said. But just as a side point, <laughs> you can uh, use the crane, extend it to full length, lift it up, and you can use it as kind of an impromptu watchtower if you're around some trees and you want to have a look over them trees, have a look what's going on around the map. Get yourself a crane, get yourself a Bruce. I mean, I can almost look back up the top of those cliffs. I see them lazy cargo lounging around on the cliffs. I'm nearly as high as that trailer. I'm as high as my uh, aviation and airmail business. So yeah. Pretty good, <laughs> pretty successful night. And bam, let's take that trailer out. I will be uh, launching Loose into space at some point, but it's running pretty loud, it's like three hours behind. Speaking of Loose, it's like, what do you mean stalled? What did I do? So I had to go and get myself a loaf and just zoomed in on it, just in case you couldn't quite see it. Because it is pretty small, and that is not what she said. She actually said, is it really, really close, or is it just massive? And I said, well, both actually. So anyway, as you can see, roof rack loaf, pretty slow but I mean some things are just born professionals flew off the cliff had a word with that lazy cargo and it's back roof racked or not you don't give a shit it's got stuff to do you ain't got time for that and uh, yeah obviously brought a roof rack pulled this thing out again 
I'm driving along like there's barely it, especially considering I've got a roof rack on the loaf at the minute, so it doesn't even go that fast anyway. Like, handbrake on, not pulling me even in the slightest bit. So, yeah, I'm pretty certain it doesn't weigh a lot. However, what does surprise me is it doesn't float, <laughs> which... Like, I said to someone the other week that I reckon there's two things that affect the float in, I believe the tyres is definitely one of them, but I'm wondering if the cab is somehow like makes it float as well because correct me if I'm wrong I don't believe I've found anything that just floats from the back end it's always usually the cab that floats and the back end is usually pretty weighted so but I don't know if I'm honest everything else about this I would assume it'd float but yeah it does which I actually think is better I might just say because the Voron I love the way that float that motors through the water even when it's floating and you can get across stuff but most of the stuff, it's like, as soon as the front starts lifting up, it barely has any traction. Um, yeah, I'd rather this thing just stays planted on the ground. I was able to drive at least deep enough to where my engine, like, gave up rather than, like, I wasn't able to go any further. So, yeah, in conclusion, it's a bit of a funny one to gauge, but it's like, it's definitely not bad. I mean, it did the quarry hills, it did better than I thought through the mud. It was pretty good on the, um on the mountains and stuff like in some ways it's a bit of a dark horse but at the same time it's definitely not like one of the best trucks in the game or anything but I don't know as far as whether you should keep it or not obviously you find it for free on Zimnigal I will when I'm like got a busy night and I just I'll make a shorter video I'll probably do the uh, like um step toe location and everything as for money it's 127 grand that's fully upgraded so it's one of them if you're not playing this game a hell of a lot you haven't got a lot of time it might be worth just selling because I mean, 90 grand is a, a bit pricey for what it is, I'd say, but it's not ridiculous. But bear in mind, the Tega is 75 grand, so it's 15 grand more than that. But yeah, it's not one of the most expensive. Like, if, if you want a little bit of a challenge, uh, yeah, it might suit you. Like I say, it's definitely not a bad truck. doesn't roll very easily, but yeah, it's, de it's not one that I use often. However, I did want to try just afterwards. Uh, I put this, like, van body thing on it, and it does... Uh, reduce the power to weight but it kind of like rather than the back end drifting a lot easier because it's very light and once you're up to speed it does kind of drift around it this game kind of does with the characteristics anyway but yeah when I put this van body on the back it was very comfortable at driving around but it also like pinned the back end down onto the floor a little bit more I purposely drove in there by the way just to tip it over um, but yeah it, it was driving along pretty nice so it's actually probably not bad as like something like you know sticking a van it or maybe possibly a maintenance trailer. To be fair, the maintenance trailer isn't very heavy. You can see when I scroll through the different add-ons, the maintenance trailer. I believe it adds a tiny bit of weight, but nothing like it's about the same as the sideboard or something. Nothing like that fuel tank. I mean, loaf. It's a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf. Of course, he flipped it. I was even dragging it back on the road. Loaf approved. And then uh, just quickly, as the last one, I tested this little, like, the Voin engine or something it's called. I mean, it's pretty damn cheap. And I was flying down here. At first, I was like, oh, it's, it's actually not bad. It felt all right. But because there isn't any resistance stats on that runway, you do get up to a nice speed anyway. But I flew off there with, uh, yeah, the Voin engine thing. It's only 2,300. And then I believe this was, um, in fact, it might this might have been another go with the Voin engine. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> that was the... Uh, Back to the normal engine. I flew a bit further with the normal engine, so I do believe it's like got the edge. And then lastly, this is just one last go with the Voin. Having a good time, having a ball. Don't stop me now. Yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bam, we landed. And I'll be back soon. Look at that. Oh my god. Starter up. We're off. <laughs>